You're listening to the Richard Spassoff Show on Paranormal UK Radio Network. Spassoff Show is brought to you by Audible. You can find us on our website at angelicmedium.org. I'd like to thank HC Universal Network. Thank you, Christopher Jordan. I'd also like to give a big thank you to the station that we're on right now, Paranormal UK Radio Network. You could also find them on their website at paukradio.com. And a big thank you to FringeRadioNetwork.com. That is FringeRadioNetwork.com. Thank you, Johnny. And another thank you to Tom Donahue at TalkStream Live and Paranormal Radio. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Hi, I'm Betty White. Keepers of the Wild is a nonprofit animal sanctuary that specializes in rescuing and caring for these wonderful creatures. The founder, Jonathan Kraft, and these wild animals have established a loving bond. To watch them interact is fascinating, and it's an experience you'll never forget. The staff and volunteers have dedicated their lives to give these animals a new start and a home where they can live out their lives in dignity. They also provide the community and children with an educational program where you can learn and help preserve our precious wildlife and the environment that we must all share. So listen to the call of the wild and support Keepers of the Wild, a truly fine organization. You could find their website at my co-host, Jason Faust. Jason, thank you for being here. After our last show last week about hell, it's still sticking to me. (laughs) Shake it off. You don't want hell sticking to you. No, we don't. We want heaven. We want God's light. But uh, <laughs> shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. It sounds good to me. Now you're you're going to talk about your. Uh, well, first of all, as everybody knows, Jason Faust is uh, a paranormal investigator as well, and he is a researcher, paranormal researcher, and his team will be uh, coming up to. What state? I actually have a, a, a team that I'm hosting here in Nebraska, in Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, from the Twin Cities in Minnesota, from Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, and I'll be coming here to stay with us. So um, that's like five days of intensive uh, therapy. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you're, you're, well you're... it might be because that'll be <laughs> five people. In one house with one bathroom. Oh, jeez. Yeah. That's not easy. How do you, first of all, regardless of the paranormal, how you how do you deal with one bathroom with five people? Well, we're, we're going to find out. When it's just me and my <laughs> wife, we make it work. With five people, I have a feeling that I might be peeing in the yard quite a bit. Oh, boy. I don't know. Ne- next week, headlines in Nebraska. Five people die. Unknown cause. Kidney <laughs> failure. I don't know. Right. I don't know. Geez, that's, that's, that's a tough one. But uh, today, you're going to talk about uh, all kinds of stuff about what? About what? 
<laughs> well, this weekend uh, when they come up, um, not this weekend, next weekend, uh, they'll be here from like the 20th through the 24th. And uh, we have, I've got a bunch of stuff planned for them. Um, I've had a couple people come in from out of town and I give them a little haunted history tour of Lincoln. And there are a number of locations here in town that I just absolutely love taking people to. That's what we're going to talk um, about. Okay, good, good. Yes. And I actually have a number of locations in surrounding areas around Lincoln in the town of Union, uh, Will, uh, not Wilbur, uh, um, Rainfort, no, I can't say the name. Uh, anyway, it's there's a, a place out just outside of town. Um, where it stands, uh, the the historic Levitt House. Right. In Union, we have what's called the Tiny House. Uh, out in Wymore, which is about an hour south of Lincoln, we have the Stevenson Building, which is run by a couple of really good friends of mine from uh, Barry Live Paranormal Productions. And uh, so I'm going to be taking them to a number of different places and I'm, I just wanted to talk about those locations and kind of uh, get it out there. Okay, uh, let's, let's so, start to talk about them. So here in Lincoln, what's going to be interesting is like uh, some of the, the bigger locations that we're going to be going to, uh, we're going to go to the State Capitol Building, which a lot of people know is haunted and a lot of people don't. Um, and so what's really cool about it is, is that my wife and I got married in the State Capitol. Oh, okay. Uh, huh. And she's really into politics. I'm really into the paranormal, so it was a great match for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, uh, the like, we obviously like you can take pictures in the state capitol building. They don't like paranormal investigators like running their equipment and doing that stuff in there. But uh, there have been reports of um, apparitions. Uh, dark shadows on stairwells, um, disembodied voices, footsteps, cries, moans. Uh, and there are rumors to why it's haunted. Um, okay. But well, like some of the reasons, some of the reasons that it's haunted and you can find, actually go back okay. and find um, articles and way, way back in the day, our state capital is uh, it's 13, 14 floors. Um, the general public can only go up to the 12th floor where the observation deck is. Um, but at, at the top, it's a domed top and okay. it has a statue of a sower on top. And way, way back in the day, they would decorate that dome on the outside with Christmas lights and they would have inmates from the penitentiary do it. Uh -oh. And so one year, uh, inmate was decorating uh, stringing the Christmas lights out there had a heart attack and felt 12 stories to his death um, then there was it was recorded that there was a gentleman that was uh, changing a light bulb that sat between the sower's legs and he slipped off the ladder and fell all the way to the ground to his death now between the 12th story where the observation deck, deck is that goes up into the uh, dome there's the 13th and 14th floor there's a spiral staircase up there and there is uh, recorded that there was a male and a female who had fallen over the rail and died uh, falling off that spiral staircase so that was the capital we're definitely going to the capital I'm going to take them in there wait wait um, okay so so you're talking about two people that died there what are some more of the apparitions that you have PP people have seen there um, they actually, um, I've never talked to anybody who's actually seen apparitions. Okay. You have, you see, like when you look it up online, um, a lot of people will say like, just it's reported apparitions. And like we were talking last week, it's funny because like there are people who have seen things, but then they won't admit seeing things cause they really don't want to look nuts. Uh, <laughs> oh, geez. And, you know, and so it's like. I think a lot of people actually like will witness something, but then they won't admit they witnessed something because then they're going to think like, well, they're going to send me to the booby hatch. So there has been reports of male and female uh, apparitions, mostly like misty figures. 
that aren't real like discernible um one of the big rumors is and i i it drives me nuts because this is so cliche okay that the capital was built on sacred native american uh grounds okay it doesn't say burial grounds okay but the further you look into this you can't get you know what tribe and obviously you know here in nebraska the sioux nation was the biggest in our area and uh, ogallala lakota was the largest most prominent tribe but you know if, if you can't find out which tribe had sacred sacred ground right in that area you know that's always the go-to this place is haunted because it was on an indian burial ground well let's have more detail <laughs> you know yeah yeah is why why is it always got to be that it's got to be the go-to and so they say that like there was uh misty shadowy dark images that people run into in the stairwells and so that's one of the reported activities that doesn't really discern if it was male or female images you know uh apparition but they say like the disembodied voices both are male and female cries moans footsteps um screams uh, uh of you know as if there is yeah. reports of a misty apparition that will fall from the dome to the ground that people will see at night. Well, that's um, pro- probably from that pri- prisoner, right? Either the prisoner or the guy who was changing the light bulb at the top. Um, <laughs> changing the light bulb at the top? Yeah. So, because there's that, there's that light bulb in between. We have the statue of the sower on top, and there's a light bulb in between his legs that's one of those... Uh, airline lights so like a crop duster doesn't come in and crash into the top of the capitol oh okay okay um, gotcha. yeah so i'm, I'm but, thinking of like a little porch light you know on on top is, is my <laughs> vi- vi- vision yeah. so now okay you explained it a little better now <laughs> <laughs> that actually kind of like is kind of funny like yeah um <laughs> I, I i pictured a little porch light up there i don't like uh, so I'm going to take them there, um, and then right across the street from the Capitol is what is uh, – there's the Ferguson and Kennard House, and okay. we won't be going to the Ferguson House. I've done uh, a bunch of events at the Ferguson House, but uh, the, uh, the Environmental Trust runs out of that house, and so it's not open for tours anymore. Um, they do like a holiday open house, and we've actually rented it around Halloween time a couple times to um do events in there but that's kind of off the books other than taking pictures of the outside now the canard house is the oldest house in lincoln it was the first house built in the town of lincoln and uh it was owned by thomas p canard the very first secretary of state here in nebraska and um just recently they had an archaeological uh, group come from the university and dig up the footings of a uh, an addition to the back of the house that was uh, torn down a number of years ago and they have it all uh, mapped out and marked and the footings you can actually see the footings in the ground and it's kind of cool so it's a lot smaller than it used to be but I've got a friend of mine from the historical society that is going to give us a tour of that house and uh, that'll be cool because it's just it, paranormal or not. You go in there and you see the way they have it set up. It's just amazing to go in, and it's almost like walking into a time machine. They have period correct furniture, decorations, um, all that stuff, and it's just beautiful and wonderful to just be inside that house, and the way that the historical society has set it up. Um, the activity in that house is believed to be more from the servants that worked for uh, Mr. Kennard and his family and more of like on the residual side of it because, you know, as they, they worked hard for the Kennard family and then, you know, obviously weren't treated, you know, what did they Quite do the to them? Best, what what did they do? There's really no story of like abuse, murder, anything like that. But right. you know, it wasn't like you know the show Benson where yeah yeah exactly you know, yeah. I mean, it's, 
it was you know back then i mean if if you go back and like even the civil war days you know kansas and uh kansas wasn't quite as much but like iowa and nebraska were and kansas to a point were like neutral states they were like kind of 50 50 uh with southern beliefs and and uh yankee beliefs but you it was like you you had your servants and stuff and then they weren't necessarily treated badly but they weren't treated as equals either okay and so oh that causes a lot, like i mean if you really think about that that causes turmoil in a person's soul uh, yeah their being their soul and so you know obviously that would that would dictate some residual energy staying behind possibly you know anger um anger yeah absolutely that's why it's not good that hold on to anger because you don't want to be hanging around earth <laughs> No right. reason to, right. yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm wondering if, you know, when we do some of this stuff, you know, I do, the, the the North Star folks that are coming down, um, they're really going to be awesome, you know, about wearing their masks and when we're, you know, in close proximity to each other and stuff. And um, we're going to practice social distancing and all the universal precautions. But I got to thinking and I'm like, I wonder if I turn around and then there's an apparition standing next to me is my first reaction going to be to see this apparition and go hey you're not wearing your mask <laughs> it was our luck <laughs> yes <laughs> i knew something was going to happen with that yeah yeah i mean <laughs> uh, just in case and and if a ghost gets too close wait a minute back off a little bit <laughs> yeah six feet ma'am come on you know. <laughs> oh boy you know the- like Totally, just she's got her hair in a bun like a school marm and a dress from the 1800s. And my worry is that she ain't six feet away and wearing a mask. <laughs> like, uh. So from the Canard House, we've got. Um, I'm going to take them to uh, Robbers Cave, and Robbers Cave here in Lincoln, Nebraska, is like really, really cool. Uh, when we were kids, we would go down there for birthday parties. And there was times um, up towards, like, our junior high days where we would go down there and, it, you know, it was – at the time, it was owned by the Scarborough family. Right. And when we were in grade school, I remember Mrs. Scarborough, um, and she had coyotes for pets. Oh, boy. Like, whereas, you yeah. know, nowadays, you know, we got – golden doodles and you know labradors yes. and all this and she had coyotes um and so she was cool she was so cool um because we'd go down there with a group of friends and there was this long uh staircase that led you down underground into the caves and the entire uh system of caves had light bulbs running all the way through it but they all ran off of one light switch at the top of these steps. Uh-oh. And it was all sandstone <laughs> steps. I was the kid that always ran up back up to the top of the steps once all my friends were down there and clicked off that switch. And one day she was sitting outside the front of the house. And I ran up there, clicked it off, and then noticed she was sitting there. And she looked me dead in the eye and she said, so you're that little kid of the group, huh? <laughs> and, and as my friends are in the pitch black down in the in the um, caves screaming and yelling because they don't have flashlights I clicked it back on and I really ashamed of myself went back down there and like I'm like I just got scolded by Mrs. Scarborough I'm like oh no it was awesome you know back then it's it's all sandstone caves and you know we used to carve our names in the walls and um it, it was it was just so cool and there was different stories like uh, Jesse James after one robbery found you know took refuge in these caves um, and uh, there's there's tons of stories in history well speaking these of Jesse James do you know a little bit about him I don't that's why I was yeah well I I've been lucky enough to investigate his birth farm <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we got some great results while we were out there. Jesse James was an American outlaw, and he was him and his brother Frank, you know, worked together, and they were mostly uh, did train robberies. And they were they were born in uh, Clay County, Missouri. Okay. And I'm 
trying to think of the town and it'll come to me. Okay. Uh, but anyway, Frank uh, fought for the Confederacy during the Civil War and Jesse, uh, the war was over before he was old enough to go fight for, you know, in the war. Um, but they would rob trains. They had their little group. He actually, Jesse James, I don't believe in sensationalizing these guys. Jesse had a different way of doing things. Okay, how so? And they're in the history books. There, uh, there is a story of him where he. How did this go? Okay, because we're right here. Jesse, I'm, well, okay, so it was it was a weird deal because it was it was for this old lady, right? Who couldn't pay for something, and so because it was crafty the way he did it. It was like he's real obvious about giving this lady some money or something right. in front of, like, a known thief. Okay. And he let this thief do what he did, and then when he was leaving for the money, then he robbed the thief, and then the lady ended up getting, like, double the amount. Oh, geez. So she was off pay off her debt, plus then sitting on top of a lot of money. And it was, like, a weird thing like that. I'd have to look it up again. So are you but, saying Jesse did? Jesse... He, uh, he gave the late, late lady some money to help her out? He was kind of like a lot of people look at him as uh, more of like a modern day Robin Hood. Really? Okay. So not what I thought then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then he ended up, he ended up uh, being assassinated. And I'm trying to think. <laughs> Of who assassinated him. Assassinated him. I'm trying to Google it real quick. Robert Ford was the guy who assassinated him. Okay. okay. Um, and Robert Ford was the guy who ran with his gang. And Jesse kind of took him under his wing. Jesse Oops. actually, like, started breaking away from the outlaw life and everything. And Robert just didn't like it. There was a lot of things between Robert and Jesse. And then to gain notoriety, he Jesse was just done with everything. And Jesse was never seen without his guns, without his holes drawn. And he went and was hanging a picture in the house one day, and there was Robert. And uh, Robert took one of Jesse's own pistols and shot him in the back of the head while he was hanging a picture on the wall. Oh, boy. So it's almost like believed that like it wasn't so much of an assassination as a, a suicide. A planned murder. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he planned his own suicide just so he didn't have to pull the own trigger. So that's, I mean, there's a little bit of background on Jesse there, but um, it was, like I said, he was like, it was Missouri and more, a little more south of Nebraska. Uh, it was his stomping grounds, but he had history in, you know, Kansas, Nebraska and stuff. And it's believed that he could have, it was very plausible that he took refuge in these robbers' caves. Oh, boy. And that's actually where it got its name. And so I'm going to take them down there. We're going to spend about two hours down there. And robbers' cave shut down for a long time. There was a flood that um, closed the original entrance. It was sealed off for a long time. And then a brewery came into Lincoln, opened it up. Um, used the brewery as like storage for their microbrews and then started giving tours through this. And then a friend of mine uh, who I worked with through my, like my day job wrote a book, did like extensive research through the Scarborough family, um, like the sons and grandsons. And then uh, the brewery actually was forced out of business and he continued given tours of the caves and so i've been able to take numerous people down there and by working with him there's beliefs that there is energy within those caves i think a lot of it is residual um just because the amount of people who spent time in those caves you know um, how, how deep do the caves go th there is i don't know you know, when you if you were to see the stairs and how far you go down, right? They're pretty deep, but they're not like it's not like you're going like hundreds and hundreds of feet down. Okay, okay. They're deep enough where in one area you 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 go down into the basement of the brewery, right? 
And then you go through another door, you go through another set of stairs all the way down, and you can go out where, like, there's an there's an area that's actually netted off to keep the bats out because there's a chimney. Oh, great. In case that <laughs> keep I, the yeah. bats out. <laughs> well, heck, like, when we were kids, I wasn't there, and so, like, the bats were in there, and it was, like, half the fun. Um <laughs> Because you'd be like walking through the caves and a bat hit you in the back of the head and you thought your friend hit you with a rock or something. And, Ooh, ouch. You know, it's like, well, you're like, that's what got the, like, the chases going through the caves, you know. And But, like, there's a chimney where you could actually look up and see daylight. So you think you're not that deep, but you don't realize how many uh, sets of stairs you've gone up and down. It's kind of weird. It's like there's some parts that... I think are extremely deep and some parts that aren't really deep. Um, but there's, there's a series of staircases that you go up and down and, um, I'm a big boy and there's one cave that's called fat man's misery. Right. And I'll tell you, it's aptly named. (laughs) (laughs) I go through that one about sideways and I, it's cool when you get to the end of it because you can see some of the flood damage to the cave at the very end. It's like just a muddy area. Um, but boy, it's a struggle. It is not conducive for a wide man. <laughs> so there's no um, way that it's hard to get through like some of the cracks or what I, I'm trying well, to. I'm, picture. I'm, between six one and six three, depending on which convenience store I'm leaving. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm roughly about six one. I I've got a little girth to me. My wife's a good cook and I have portion control problems. It's a narrow, narrow cave. And so I pretty much have to go sideways. And when I go down in these, like I wear um, you know, I usually have my camera and a couple pieces of equipment. Um but it's short as well. So it's not conducive for tall people and it's not conducive for people with a lot of girth. Right. You know, so that's why it's called Fat Man's Misery. But no matter what, those caves are a blast, you know, and that's why I want to take these guys down there. They're going to love it. I am actually going to take them on on the 20th when they arrive. I'm taking them out to Wymore, Nebraska. Like I said, that's about an hour south of Lincoln. And it's the Stevenson Building. I don't know an, an extreme amount of history on the Stevenson Building. I do know that Capone has ties to it um, during Prohibition. And when you really like, if you think about back in in the Mafia days, when you like, if I don't know how much history you've read on uh, mafia and, uh, prohibition practices. But like a lot of times when you, when you hear about like prohibition or whatever, you think about the speakeasies in Chicago and New York and mm-hmm. whatnot. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of their operations were moved into the Midwest because they could fly under the radar a lot better in rural areas and farming communities and whatnot. And so Capone actually had, uh, ties into Wymore during the prohibition. It wouldn't surprise me. And so there was underground tunnels connecting several of these buildings in Wymore. And so between the prohibition and bootlegging liquor, laundering money, stuff like that, there's a lot of bad juju in this building uh, from, like, mafia activities. Well, did did you Uh, know that Al Capone had his own jail in his place, too? Where was that at? I don't know exactly what place, but from what I heard from his relatives when I talked to them and some cops that were San Diego uh, detect- detectives that knew about this, uh, they were telling me that, that he had his own jail to put some of his uh, enemies in the jail. Really? Yeah. I don't think they got taken care of well. I would expect not. No. I don't think he probably had a lot of rules and regulations. <laughs> I don't think he did either, no. Oh, well, but. so that's that's the history I know of, like, the Wymore building. But what's really cool about that is they have the first floor set up like a museum, like a paranormal museum. I'm guessing it's, like, way better than Zach Baggins in, in uh, Vegas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, the thing is, like, there are items in, in Stevenson building in Wymore. They're legit. Um, they know the history of every item. They know what they have. 
Um, it's not like they're just picking crap up from antique shops and slapping a generic story on them. Um, they they pick up an item and they spend quite a bit of time getting a history and a story and a background on every item that they have. And so that is like half the fun is seeing these items that they have on display in the first floor. Um, so that that's going to be a fun one is the Wymore building. Yeah. The Stevenson building in Wymore. Going the other way, if you go about an hour east of Lincoln, okay. in the town of Union, and what is called the, we call it the tiny house. It's also known as the garrison house. Um, my friend Nick Rayer, who is remodeling this house, and if I remember right, it is, I don't want to say it out loud. Okay. I don't remember how many, I want to say it was, I, I, I can't remember how many square foot this house is, but it's three floors, not including the cellar. Okay. So it'd be like four floors. This is big. Um, my wife and I came across it literally by fate. Um, and we just became friends with the owner like right away. <laughs> um, and we've been friends with him now for uh, four years, maybe five years, because it might have been the year before we got married that we stopped. Um, and well, we've what, done a couple of. What is it about this house that is going well, on there? The way that we got into it was he was going to renovate it for his own living quarters. Okay. Then he, when he found out I do paranormal investigations, he asked, he said, would you be able to come out here and tell me if I have activity, if I have anything living with me? Um, and this, this house, he has completely gutted out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. He is doing a wonderful job, wants to bring it back to its original glory from 1917. Right. He had me come out there, and I did it overnight, and we did some research on uh, the original owner, Charles Garrison, and then what it was over the years. And it was in the Garrison family for a long, long time, and then from the 50s through the 80s, it was an end-of-life care home. So basically like a hospice home. And so there was well over 100 deaths recorded on the property when it was his hospice home. And so there's a happy feel to it because apparently the patients in the hospice home were treated very good. Good. That's and I've good taken uh, three psychic mediums out there and never told any of them what the other one's readings right, right. were. They all went out there and picked up on the same stuff. Um, I mean, almost like identical readings everywhere in the house and so it, it gave me a great baseline in the metaphysical area um i the only activity i've witnessed out there is on the back stairs where the servant stairs were um i'll catch a whiff of cherry tobacco like a pipe tobacco right and so that's really weird because like in that area just like all of a sudden it hits you like a ton of bricks but then it's gone instantly gone you can't catch another a spirit one. for sure yes. yeah yes. and so i've i've told him you know i said you you do have something here but it's residual and it's friendly as can be and uh so he loves to show off the house i love to show off the house and have him do it and so i do take people out there i do feature it on the page quite a bit um and it's kind of nice because he'll show it off and just say, you know, hey, you want to see the house? Love to show you the house. If you want to leave a donation, it's much appreciated. And so that puts a little bit of folding cash in his pocket to put towards renovations. Right. And so it's kind of like this great big fun circle of everybody ends up happy. So that one will do as well. But then I've got a number of locations here in Lincoln. Again, some, most of them you're going to be able to find out of uh, two books. Um, Alan Boy's book, The Guide to the Ghost of Lincoln, which has been revised, I believe, five times now. It was first released in 1983. And if you're a Lincolnite or a native Nebraskan, you're going to know this book. Everybody knows this book. <laughs> um, and he lives in, like, Virginia now. 
but and he teaches uh i believe at a college but um he told some great ghost stories in this book and then a dear friend of mine just recently i think last year and a half uh maybe two years he had gotten a book published called beyond lincoln a history of nebraska hauntings and went and found the background information on a lot of these uh, stories that Alan Boy had told. And he got like the concrete evidence. He found the newspaper articles, what happened, why they, why things happened, and why it's believed to be haunted. And so like I'll take uh, the group out to uh, Wilderness Park here in, in Lincoln. Um, and everybody knows the story of the witch of Wilderness Park. No, tell which, us the story of the witch. <laughs> Well, <laughs> pardon me. I said that wrong. All the Nebraskans know the story of the Winter okay. Wilderness Park, and that's the urban legend. Um, that's the stuff that isn't true. But what was believed to – there was uh, a lady that lived in Wilderness Park at the time, which would have been like very rural area, a uh, very heavily wooded area, and she didn't like the Lincolnite kids coming out. And being in her bubble. <laughs> okay, so space, speak. yeah, yeah. So she would abduct them, and it was kind of like the Hansel and Gretel thing where, you know, she would abduct them, and they were, you, you know, some stories say she cooked them and ate them. Some people said they did. She just killed them and buried them. Um, she but, didn't care for children too much, apparently. Apparently not. Oh, and so... One day, a brother and sister were walking through the woods, and the uh, brother was abducted. The sister got away, told the uh, Lincoln uh, authorities, and, uh, you know, the story goes that the Lincoln authorities said they have to be missing for 24 hours or more before we do the missing persons, and the parents were pissed, and they basically went vigilante mode and went out and strung up this old lady by chains from the tree and killed her. Now, is that part and, true? Did they kill anybody? No, no. No. That that entire story is false. That is all I say urban legend and it's really actually not urban legend because urban legend does have some kind of fact that started the story. And there's no fact behind any of that. Well, no fact um, that you could find, though. Well, there's actually fact that disproves that story as well. Okay, what um, would, what would that be? There was like a Methodist uh, church camp in the area of where the Switcher Wilderness Park was supposed to be. Um, at the same time that the Witcher Wilderness Park was supposed to be. Okay. And it was almost like a rural amusement park. It had an amphitheater that sat up to like a thousand people. The tents were like um, small cabins, uh, you know, activities in the uh, Salt Creek, um, all kinds of stuff. And they had people that came to the amphitheater um, that were big names. They had uh, uh, Teddy Roosevelt and other very large names at the time come and speak and uh, – uh, do things at this camp and the reason the camp left was because it was in a very flood prone area and it kept washing away the tents and um, they didn't want to keep rebuilding so you go out to this area and you can find still footings of where some of the buildings were It that camp was there at the same time that people believe this which a wilderness park was okay and there's no way that that area could be that populated and that witch get away with abducting children the way that the story leads to. And there's concrete evidence of this camp being here, this Methodist like church okay. camp thing. Um, we're going to back up here. And the, the, <laughs> the reason that there's activity in Wilderness Park was because there was a train trestle that ran through Wilderness Park. <laughs> there was a gentleman who tampered with um, a connecting plate on the track um, on the trussle, and the train derailed, went down into the creek, uh, and started a blaze once it crashed, and 11 people died, and many more were injured before they could actually put the fire out or rescue anybody else coming out, and so... You hear uh, metal clanging, 
screams, moans, cries, all everything that you would right, attribute right. to a burning train coming off a train trestle. So that's all that. And so we'll probably take a hike through Wilderness Park. And this is just like a handful of what we're going to do. I wanted to tell a little bit about a number of these different locations that we're going to go to. Um, but there's even more that we're going <laughs> to, I got a lot more that we're going to, but I wanted to tell you about some of the more, the, the larger ones. The main ones. Gonna... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And thank you, Jason, for sharing them tonight. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for letting me share them because I get excited when I get to show off my own backyard. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, including our audience, thank you again for tuning in to the Richard Spassoff Show with my co-host, Jason Faust. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, too, and God bless everyone. I'd also like to give a big thank you to the station that we're on right now, Paranormal UK Radio Network. You could also find them on their website at paukradio.com. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Richard Spazoff Show. For more episodes and information, join us online at psychicmediumspazoffshow.com or catch the show on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast service. The Richard Spazoff Show is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts. For more great content and shows, visit hcuniversalnetwork.com or download our free HC Universal Network podcast app from your favorite device market. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And until next time, keep, keep watching watch on the dark, 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 dark. dark.